Welcome, Grave Diggers, to the Buried Sisters. I'm your host, Irene, and I'm here with my sister, Kiki. Hey, everyone. And our producer, Lance. Hello. And today we're going to discuss the Kansas City Butcher. Ooh. Yes. So... And where is Kansas City? <laughs> it's You know what? I thought it was in Kansas, but it's in Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> Man, joke's on you. You didn't know that either. <laughs> Get out of here. I said I never thought about it. Oh, but I, yeah, I would have probably guessed <laughs> incorrectly. Yeah, thank. Okay, so uh, this story takes place. We're going to start off on April 2nd, 1988. And basically, we're in a residential neighborhood, and there's a parking meter enforcement officer kind of walking up and down the block and he looks up and sees this naked man wearing literally nothing but a dog collar and a leash around his neck and he's kind of like limping and running down the street towards him and as as this naked man is like i said running and limping towards him he's like really just really messed up he could barely talk he can't hear him very well at all when he tries to speak up and he's just like covered in all of these injuries uh, to start. His feet were really, really swollen and bruised. His eyes were so, so red and swollen that they were almost like swollen shut. Whoa. Yeah. And they had like all these like kind of like burn scars around them. And then his mouth and his wrists had a whole bunch of just like old and new lacerations, just like kind of you could see like scabs form forming around the mouth and wrists along with newer cuts. So scabs, so there are older cuts? Yeah, mm -hmm. older and also fresh ones. So huh. it looks like he had- He's gone through got, it for a, few for a few days or- Yeah, definitely. Like, geez. And, and all in all, he had like welts and cuts just basically all over his body, bruises. He was just beat up really bad. And so this parking enforcement officer is trying to help him. And at, at that time, they didn't have cell phones. And so he walks over with this man um, to the neighbor's house and knocks on the door. The neighbor answers, and they were able to call 911 together. Wow. That's yeah. so scary. I can't imagine just like. Like, what do you do? Making, you know, my quesadilla at home, and then someone knocks on the door, <laughs> and this bloody poor human beings at my door and with a help. dog collar wearing a dog collar and a, a leash. dog collar did you say that i did but you were probably texting oh or my goodness do not try to call me out right Lance? now yeah did i say just, it yes. <laughs> and i don't and i saw well, you <laughs> busted i did not catch that part but yeah so he's wearing a dog collar and a leash well wow. yeah it's like what do you do like, I'm like was that like a bit? kinky situation kinky situation gone wrong well or? you know that's a that's actually a great point um because when police arrived they did think that initially and that this guy wanted to call the police and rat out his lover and they're like probably they were thinking that oh it's probably some weird sex fetish thing gone wrong and he's mad or whatever right so that that did go through the officer's minds um for a minute or yeah, you know, once they arrived. I mean, right. So, yeah, it's not totally weird to think that. But when the police did arrive, they found out that the man, his name was Chris Bryson. Um, he was 22 years old at the time. He had actually jumped out of a second story window from a home that was across the street from where the officer found him. Um, the address of the house was 4315 Charlotte Street. And initially, when police interviewed him, he kind of lied to them a little bit because they asked, you know, what, what happened? How did you get here? And he said that he was picked up by a man and a woman a few days ago, um, back on March 29th. And he said this because he didn't want them to, I guess, judge him if he were to say, oh, I was picked up by a man around midnight. You know, right. it was just a man. Right. It, it, he, I think that he felt it would just be more... I don't want to say shady, but I guess. But it's shady if you're going to lie to me. I'm like, because the right. truth is eventually going to surface. So, right. Well, I he mean, was he was working as a he was a, a gay sex worker. Okay. So I think for him it was just I he, think just, he just, just didn't panicked. want to put a target on his back. For, yeah. Yeah. Because I mean the the right the rights. This is the eighties. The late exactly. 80s, that it wasn't right. like it is today. So definitely was. I think he was just nervous. See, scared, I was paying panicked. attention. I do know it was the late eighties. <laughs> okay, relax. <laughs> relax. <laughs> So he said that the, a few days ago he had been invited to a party by the man and the woman 
and that he hopped in their car and he was taken to their house. And once he got there, he was like, oh my gosh, all this stuff started going, started happening. It was just really crazy. So he explained that when he got to the house on Charlotte Street, it was a total mess. Um, the, the guy who picked him up, his name, he introduced himself as Bob. And so he said, yeah, Bob opens the door. There's just junk all throughout the house. Just very, very dirty. Um, he had two dogs, the two chow chow dogs, mm -hmm. and they were like urinating in the house. Kind of reminds me of the other episode of oh like, my gosh, a I was filthy just house, that. right? Just yeah. Like, it's so reminiscent of the Willie Picton story. So yes. Far. That's what I was thinking too when I was researching. And with the sex workers and, and then the a butcher messy, again. Yeah. 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 yeah, right, and the sex workers too, absolutely. So anyways, real dirty house, really gross, and Bob just kind of like shows him around, tells him he's an art student, and just, just kind of giving, giving him a tour, then says, well, let's go upstairs. I have some fun drugs for us to do, and that way the dogs won't bother us. We'll just like lock the dogs down here. And so Bryson's like, okay, cool, let's do it. So they start climbing the stairs to go to the second floor, and Bob is standing behind him and all of a sudden he gets hit in the head Jeez. with something which he later finds out was like an iron bar. Oh my god. Yeah, so the, so Bob straight up like just yeah, beats him over the head him. with it to knock him out and as Bryson is falling forward, oh. he falls forward almost lands right on his face. I can just imagine the force of that. And um he tries to turn around to defend himself, but before he can even react, he feels this stinging sensation in his neck and he's being injected so bob's got a <gasps> oh my god and he's this injecting like freaking him me out already yeah i'm not oh, ready this is nothing so he injects Ugh. him in the neck with um Ugh. a tranquilizer and he and he blacks out god. this is what scares me with friends and stuff um that online date you know they go on tinder or grinder or whatever they go on yeah and it always freaks me out because i don't know Obviously, this situation, I know the story, but it always freaks me out that the person on the other end has this like sick agenda to harm someone, to do non-consensual things with someone. Right. And it it's one of my fears for my friends who do this. And so to hear this part just really, you know, struck a nerve for me. Yeah. Just, it's, it's You never know. Who, yeah. You never know. Oh, you and never know oh. who you're going to, you know, who's going to let you into their home. Yes. Even if you were selling something on like Craigslist, all those things. When you need to have a trusting moment or a vulnerable moment, you're going into someone's home. You never know if it's someone who's going to be some psychopath or, you know, they present themselves so nicely. Like this guy's like, oh, yeah, like come in. I'm an art student. You know, let's go upstairs and do some drugs. The dogs won't bother us up there. And instead he whacks the guy and then he yeah. like injects him like, ugh. Yes. Yeah. Very terrible. Sorry. Dairy. My, my very quick, scary. <laughs> my my quick recap. For no. Everyone. It's, yeah. It just freaks I, me out. I agree. Definitely. And so Bryson, um, when he finally wakes up, he opens his eyes and he sees that he's completely naked, and he's been tied to the bedposts, and he's been tied Jesus. spread eagle. Oh. So naked and just spread out. The yeah. most vulnerable a man can be. Right. And yeah. A woman. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. the rest of this encounter now is that I'm going to tell you is based on Bryson, what he's told the police, but also based on Bob's confession, because later he does confess to these crimes to the police. And also there was a, they found a journal of his that had some of the stuff in it. A journal of Bob's? Bob's journal. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, some photographs. So. Kind of keep that in mind. God. That's how everything comes together. A lot uh, of different places here so, will paint this picture. It's already freaking me out. Yeah. I'm, like my stomach hurts. So as Bryson is passed out, Bob's sitting there and he's taking Polaroid pictures of him as he's, again, drugged like, to the point where he loses consciousness. And, and spread so, out. Yeah, spread out. He, pu he puts him in all these weird positions. He's like... Oh poking him in different places and like just like getting different things different instruments to like poke and prod at him and then take pictures of him as he's doing this Oof. yes and bob decides he's going to use him as his basically his unconscious personal sex slave oh my god that's what he was used as so he's continually the whole time he's with uh, i'm sorry the whole time he has him captive he's continually injecting him with these sedatives oh jeez 
which and the sedatives he received from I'm, I'm assuming um, the vet because he would breed these chow chow dogs. And so he would say, yes, I need I need these sedatives in order to keep the dogs calm, et cetera. But instead, he would use them to and, control people. And who's to say that? I don't know that that's even obviously none of this is safe and healthy, obviously. But can you even use sedatives made for dogs on humans can i don't think it's recommended well um, obviously he doesn't <laughs> care if he's no, doing not. all this to this man yeah, anyway, he's hitting so. people in the head with an iron rod right and, he does not and and spread an amigo and tying him down and yeah yeah so he i mean i would my guess is that maybe like the base property of the sedative would be similar to like a human one but but dosing is going to be different for, too. Of course. And, you know, oh, yeah. It's different on a 20 pound chow chow and a 180 pound Absolutely. human. Yeah. And it's, and it's engineered for Canines animals versus and, or, humans. Yeah. yeah. So I am sure it's not recommended, uh, but yeah. So he's injecting him. Um, eventually he puts a, like a pillowcase over his head, also a gag in his mouth. And so Bryson is in and out of consciousness. He wake he wakes up about, he estimates seven hours later because he sees the sun come up and that's when he realizes that he's gagged and Jeez. that he can't move. He's tied to the bed as he's like pulling on the restraints. They kind of tighten so he can tell that there's there's just no way he can get out of them. And he's not getting bathroom breaks or little meals or anything. No, not at this point. No, he's Jeez. just he's just yeah, tied to the bed. So as he's struggling, I, Bob can hear him moving around. And so he knows that he woke up. And so he comes up to the bedroom where he's tied and he removes the pillowcase off of his head so he can see him, he, so he can see his face. And Bryson recalls that when that pillowcase was removed, everything looked so like, everything was so like blurry and foggy and he knew at that point that he was heavily drugged because wow. he, even his vision was impaired he couldn't see straight Jeez. so he tried at this point he tried to make like a pleading sound for mercy to bob like please like right. well, i'll do whatever you want but instead bob has no you know he doesn't feel bad for him he's instead he takes his finger and he starts like poking him in the eyes oh my god with his finger yeah, so weird. Yeah, right? I'm like, like disturbed big time right now. I'm grabbing my face and just. Well, he didn't think that was harsh enough. And so then he goes, Bob leaves, returns, and he had grabbed a bottle of ammonia and he and a Q-tip. And so he puts the ammonia on the Q-tip and repeatedly like over and over and over would swab this poor man's eyes oh my gosh. with ammonia. Yeah, oh he was trying gosh. to partially blind him. Oh my gosh and oh. as he's doing this he would say to him the only things you need to think of are you me and this house and he would just tell him that over and over That's so just keep thinking that well the only thing that matters are you me and this house the only things that exist are you like me right now that's, and this house that's creepy i'm right so troubled. I mean, that's that's hell right i mean there's only three things in your life right now and they're all terrifying right yeah, yeah. oh and now I'm going to like blind you. So you have to, oh. you know how like when one sense is taken away, oh, the others so are heightened. It's like, amplified and right. So it's like, oh God. Jesus. Yeah. He was a horrid, horrid person. Yeah. So Bob is doing that. Um, Then he, as his next form of punishment, he decides he's going to sit on, on the bed on the edge of the bed. And then eventually he sits on top of Bryson and he gets that iron bar again and he starts hitting Bryson's hands. Oh. And I can just imagine your hands are bound to the bedpost. And for me, my hands are sensitive anyway. But to have an iron rod and someone smashing your hand with this iron rod, I would imagine he's at least fracturing bones, oh. right? I imagine a lot of the blood has left his hands at this point. So he may... Oh, that's a good point because they're up above his head. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I mean, mine would for sure. So. Yeah, me too. Yeah, absolutely. So he would either really feel it or really not Oof. feel it. I'm not sure. Yeah, that sounds horrendous. You guys are freaking me out. I'm seriously, I, this is the worst episode right now. For me. I'm having a really difficult right, time. I'm, I'm in. intentionally <laughs> like trying to tune some of the details you guys are saying out. I hate to tell you, but this is <sighs> not as bad as it gets. You guys, I can't even watch Dexter and you, <laughs> this is, I, I, I that mean, was my thought, though, when he injected him in the neck was oh. my first thought was Dexter because he would stick Can him in the neck. Can we fast forward? <laughs> I'm like, 
like squ squirming in my seat. Well, let me help you squirm a little more. Thanks. So then he decides to, and you know, and Bob is doing all these things and he keeps telling him this is to discipline you. And the guy, you know, just laying he's like, there. Who the like, hell are you? Hell? Why are you? Yeah, what the fuck's me, happening? You freak. Yeah. So he's like, this is all for discipline. Like basically he wanted to have complete control over someone. He was just really obsessed. And he didn't with know that. this guy. He wasn't like a regular or anything. Like right. He he was not a regular. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So he's there. Um, like I said, he's hitting this poor guy's hands. Jeez. Then he goes and brings in, and I don't know, I don't know exactly what this is, but it's a, a transformer, which I'm sure I, mean, I know it's an electrical device. I know transformer. Want to tell us what it is? <laughs> Megatron comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here to punish you. Oh, okay. God. He I, would. Megatron would probably do something. I imagine really. it's like a battery in this. Okay. Yeah. This situation. He brings in a transformer. He's got like these alligator clips yeah. attached to it and it's plugged into the wall <sighs> and he attaches them, these clips to Bryson's testicles and his thigh. <sighs> And you guys can imagine. Um, you know, at the time, Bryson, he couldn't see what was happening. So he didn't know what was clamped on him down there. And I walked into a party once real quick at a hotel. <laughs> oh, no. And this really weird man was laying in a bed. And he was electrocuting his own nipples with, I think, maybe a transformer. <laughs> what? What yeah. kind of parties do you attend? Uh, you were there. Oh, I don't try to drag yeah, me into you this, were. sister. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean I. I have to interrupt these stories because they're really I know creepy. you're it's making you and sweat. I need, yeah, 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 Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So as a, <laughs> so it's like it's not funny. So I'm sorry, Wait, but I'm funny. You are sometimes. <laughs> so again, Bryson doesn't know what's going on, and then he start. He feels sudden strong jolts of electricity just shooting through his lower body, um, his torso, his groin area. And as if all this isn't bad enough, as Bob is doing all these things to him, he's taking pictures of it. Like the Jeez, whole time. He's, he's documenting. He's getting. Yes, he's he getting, is like, documenting. He's getting off on it or something. Absolutely. He's getting off on it. And so Bryson is, like I said, he's 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 bound to the bed, kind of blindfolded with this pillowcase on his head. And his eyes are swabbed and he's kind Jeez. of going blind. And on top of that, you hear and that sound of the camera going, you know, like in like yeah, scary movies. Right. like. I'm not going to make the sound effect because uh, just do it. <laughs> no, <laughs> come on. Let me hear the sound I don't effect. even know how to like start. It'd be like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That was a joint effort. I feel yeah, better. It was amplified. But that's, amplified. that's scary. It that is. sound is so it really horrifying is. to me. And then, you know, <laughs> 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 but yeah, I mean, can you imagine? Oh no, no, no. And we find we find out later on that Bob did this to all of his victims. Oh my god! This was like his thing. How his, did he? Know, how did, did the other victims not survive? You can't you tell me. Do no, you want to know? No, because maybe the others don't want to know. But I'm like, how did this fool not get caught if the other victims didn't? Don't survive? don't jump ahead. No, like, we won't. I'm so okay. curious if this is okay. one of his first okay. or one of his last. So I don't want to jump ahead, but I want to know that because mm -hmm. it sounds like an exploration. You know what I mean? Like yes, he yes. has these things planned, but he is really exploring. Oh, he's got a lot of shit to explore. He's like, I got this tranquilizer and I got this metal this rod. I'm gonna, baby. Got I'm gonna mega. shock you know your nipples or whatever. I'm gonna shock and, your nipples. You know, he's got all these you gadgets. Know, I didn't even say he put it on his nipples. Well, I mean, I saw someone shocking their nipples. So it's all. Oh, yeah, that was you. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> I wasn't shocking anyone's nipples, though. Yeah, you were. I would. It's all right. Like Lance wanted me to. Lance, no. No, would you like her to you. shock your nipples? <laughs> no, thank you. Why am I laughing? That's terrible. Because <laughs> you're nervous. I'm very nervous. I'm squeezing my face. I look like ghost face right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so all right, so as, as Bryson down. is bound and, like I said, poked, electrocuted, this is all being documented, not only with the Polaroid pictures, but he's also jotting down notes. He's got, like, this journal. It's like a torture journal. Oh, free. And he would write. Yeah, he was, he was For real. Free. Yeah. And he would write down, like, what's going on and at the time um, that all these things are being done and the person's, like, reaction to it. But I'll get a little more into that later. Um, so as he's saying this to him, he's also, he also tells him basically that you need to cooperate with me. If you don't cooperate, so if you try to fight back to what I'm doing, you're going to end up in the trash 
just like the others. Oh, okay. Well, and he shows him different Polaroids of, of what look like men who are deceased geez. in that same room. Yeah. So Bryce's like, oh shit, I get better just try to just deal with this. Um, Poor guy. Which to me, it's like, how do you not? fight back um not to say he didn't try but like i just mean as a natural but was he still response but was he still yeah he was still bound yeah well, what is he supposed to do maybe okay. like stay still or i don't know I mean, like he's partially sedated as well so yeah he doesn't have much fight in yeah him. so no to way. me it's like what do you mean don't fight back i think oh. again i think bob just wanted to have so much control even like psychological control over him to say you know like basically like just just accept this as your right. fate just tell right. me that like you're gonna cooperate I think he just Canada. wanted to control him in every way possible. Ugh. So he injects him again after this oh. and he loses consciousness. And as he loses his consciousness, he's just repeatedly sexually assaulting him. So he's, you know, well, more than that, I'm sure. Right. Is he like also cutting him and stuff? I'm, I'm, sure. I'm sure he is. I'm yeah. Sure he's Cause he's like hitting sexu- him. I mean, sexually assaulting is terrible, but I'm sure he's, yeah, well, I mean, all these other things right. on top Oof. of that. All so, of it. Ooh. I mean, yeah, Rubbing there's ammonia a mix on his of eyes it. And... This to me, I don't, the ammonia freaked me out and this that freaked me out. me out. He also then decides he's going to inject Drano oh, into his vocal cords. Um, what is wrong? Like, who thinks of that? This sick fuck, apparently. Jesus. he's gonna. I'm so right. he injects Drano. Oh, Can you imagine? That is like, I mean, that's a, that's a drain... Yeah, you know, that cleaner, like takes like, all this like crappy hair and clog that like burns residual, it. right? And it like yeah. melts so, everything, which and explains that. why when the officer found him or he found the officer, he couldn't speak very well. He couldn't speak loudly. He's his yeah. voc- vocal cords Jeez. have been damaged by this maniac injecting so Drano. So this maniac has like broken his hands, basically. Right. Has injected Drano into his vocal box and has put ammonia in his eyes. To yeah, blind raped him. him. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's. Taking away all his senses too, voice, right, right, and, and then he's just telling him it's just nothing. There's nothing else, just me, you, and the house. Gosh, what a freaking Ugh. psychopath! Yeah, and this torture went on for the next four days, which I can't oh. even imagine. Four Can you minutes. imagine, like, even when you're at the doctor, like getting a root canal, it's like forty five <laughs> minutes, but it feels like ten hours. I can't imagine. Right, and they're trying to be somewhat and mine, gentle. And mine's just like a root canal, right? They're like numbing me and stuff. Oh, I just can't. I'm so. It's like, a, like I said, this is a weird fear of mine anyway. So it's, yeah. this is not, I'm not doing well. I'm yeah. not okay. Sorry. So yeah, for four days he was drugged, kept tied to the bed, electrocuted, sexually assaulted, injected, like I said, in the throat with the drain cleaner, Jeez. his eyes swabbed with ammonia Jeez. and beaten. Stop saying swab. Sorry. Beaten with an iron bar. What do you want me to say? I don't know. Like just splashed? No. Rubbed? rubbed don't say swab anymore it's freaking me out oh it's like the word moist like you have i don't know swab i can handle moist i think of delicious cake you know no but i'm just saying it's one of those words that you you know like like so bryson at this this whole time he's trying his best to cooperate and to gain his trust because at this point he's like what the fuck else i need to live through this and this guy's swabbing me this guy's i thought you said don't say that word i can say it but you can't oh my god i need full control and so after, like I said, a couple of days, he actually gets Bob to start trusting him a little bit. And when, and he, he asks Bob, can you please tie my hands in front of me and rather than up above my head right. and attached to the bed because I just don't have any circulation going to my arms and it's really, really painful. I mean, of course, this guy's in a lot of other pain, but right. um, he somehow convinces him to do that and so bob starts tying his hands in front of him um a few times and he also convinced bob to let him have the tv on while he's gone because like bob would like go to work and stuff and just leave this Jeez. guy you so know. obviously he was feeding him i'm stuck on the food here did he like <laughs> do we know if he was being fed um i know that he tries to feed feed i don't know if it was him or someone else i don't know if he, i mean i'm sure he I fed him at right. some point i, know I don't know like exactly least of his worries of course you want to know about the damn food i love i don't food. know <laughs> he might have fed him he may not have i'm not sure let's just say sure he okay gave him a snack. it makes okay. it all a little better i guess so he convinces him to let him have the tv on um with the remote control like between his legs which i was a little like no 
I was a little confused. Like, what's that going to do? How, how are you going to change the channel with the remotes between your legs? Like, I can do a lot with my feet. I can, like, pick But his feet up. are bound. He's, oh, yeah. He's okay, spread eagle. Are you changing it with your wang? Like, how are you? <laughs> what is up with you with genitalia? I don't know. But how do you change the channel? I mean. Well, he's, his hands are in front of him now, he said? Yeah. So oh, maybe, yeah. okay. I'm just a pervert. Way yeah. over your head. You just. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> That's right. It was at the same time. Okay. I, I, I mean, yeah, I was just making sure you guys were paying attention. Uh, That's uh, all. Right. That's all it was. Uh, yes, you passed. You passed the exam. Very good. Excellent. I want a treat. <laughs> <laughs> and so he convinces him to do this. And this is actually what leads to Bob being captured. So one day, Bob allows Bryson to have his hands tied in front of him. He has the remote. Bob takes off and goes to work. And Bryson like looks around and is basically going, okay, this is the first time that he's left me alone in the house with my hands tied in front of me. Right. And he's terrified. He doesn't know what to expect. If he, if he's able to free himself, he doesn't know if those crazy dogs are downstairs, if they're vicious. Right. There's a lot he, of unknown. Cause he's a lot of unknown. So yeah, he doesn't know if he, if he left or not all the way. downstairs in general, or the right. scariest part to me is if he was able to unbind one arm and not the other for some reason or the hands and not the feet and then he comes and then he gets home caught and right yeah oh my gosh so there's so much oh risk God. in yeah. that situation and absolutely anxiety and fear i agree well what happened was as he's laying in bed he noticed that bob left a like a used book of matches mm -hmm. in the room and he didn't realize it and it was within bryson's reach so he was able to get the matchbook and what he did, he he lit basically he would light the matches and burn through the rope. Wow. That was used to tie his hands. And so that's how he freed himself. He burned through the rope on his hands and on his feet from the bed. And again, he didn't go downstairs because he wasn't sure what to expect. So he opens the window, which by the way, he didn't know he was upstairs still. Cause oh again, he had been drugged so much, he didn't know if he had been right. moved or what. Uh, the window was totally sealed off as far as anybody being able to see inside. So he opens like the curtains or whatever. And he's like, oh, well, I guess I'm on the second story. Don't have a choice. Of course, that situation does not ever. It's like, it's course, not easy, he's like, he's right? Like, of course, yeah. I'm on the second story. Right. Why would right. I be on the first story? Exactly. Yeah. So he, he leaps out of this of this window. And as he lands on outside he he breaks one of his feet too because oh, he's just gosh, like gosh this guy it's tough yeah yeah so that's how he escaped and this is how bob was eventually caught wow so, so i wonder if he would have not survived had he not i w i i don't think he would have jeez can you imagine living like how do you live through that like I feel like yeah, how do you recover like yeah, mentally, right, mentally, emotionally? Because that's not just one thing. That's like days of torture. And that's and I think that's more scarring than the physical punishment is the mental. Right. Like that mess. It I stay, imagine that mess. I imagine you it'll stay up. with you. Oh yeah. I mean, how does anybody get past that? You oh, know? Yeah. yeah. So scary. So officers um arrive on scene. Like I said, I they had just interviewed him. Bryson's now taken to the hospital for all of his injuries. And the officers are waiting at the house basically for Bob to get home because he wasn't home. Jeez. And it's just like you said, Kiki, that their first thought was they were suspicious whether this was like some sort of like sex game or something like that. Um, I gone mean, that's wrong. pretty damn severe. Like this guy's like halfway blind and. I He's know. been tranquilized. I mean, I guess I had the dog collar is what made me right. So he had a collar. He put a collar on him too while he was. Doing yes. This. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Bob gets home and he kind of like walks up to the police car all annoyed. And he's like, what do you guys want? Why are you bothering me? Like totally like kind of like barks at them. And the police basically say, you know, yeah, there's there's been a report of sexual assault we need to search your house. And he's like, no, screw you. Like you're not you going to warrant. You yeah. You're not going to search my house. Like no way. Like F off. And so they get us officers end up getting a search warrant, um, along with animal control. Does that happen quickly. You think getting a search warrant? Or do you I think, think it just depends. Like I think it depends on the situation. Okay. Um, that day they received it 
very quickly because it was oh, same good. day. Oh, good. That's what I was curious Yeah, on. yeah. They weren't going to let she this guy give someone have, out of give their him the sight. opportunity to like exactly. clean up what he needs to clean up. Yeah, especially if this man just jumped out of your right. window and he's oh. bound. And I believe you need a judge to sign off on one, mm-hmm. and it depends on the situation. So this was severe. Somebody thought it was a severe enough yeah. situation Thank to give it to goodness. a judge. And the judge yeah, expedite it, it for immediately. It right. was one of those situations where at least they're getting some justice, hopefully. Right, right. And so officers, uh, um, like I said, they have the search warrant. They get animal control to come and help with the dogs. And uh, I'm sorry, there were actually three dogs. So were the dogs like taken care of? I'm just curious. Or was he just shit to the dogs too? I think they were like just, yeah. I mean, I think they were like taken care of just yeah, fine. I, was wondering if they I were, don't, like, I don't think they were like, like beat or anything. No, I don't. They weren't starved or okay. anything like that. Just um, or beaten. Yeah, he didn't abuse. So the weird dogs, that someone's as as like, I, I could take care of these living dogs, which I love dogs. I love them more than people. But this Bob's like, oh, I have these dogs. I'll breed and be good to and feed. But oh, this human being that's coming into my home, I'm gonna literally treat you like you're dirt beneath my shoe and worse. You know? Oh yeah, it's crazy to me. I think a lot of that is just their. I think it could be their upbringing, all their resentment, yeah. like. The dogs, you know, they didn't do anything to them and they don't hurt. Maybe he sees it like they don't hurt people or they like haven't had a vendetta affected some, him. Right. right. right but if he people. has some sort of weird thing towards people or a certain like someone. A yeah. Right. Who knows? Yeah. So uh, officers enter the home. Of course, it's a mess. They head upstairs and they find like this room that's closed off. They enter the room that was locked. And they see that there's basically a bed and a TV in there, which is the room that Bryson was held in. They see the burned rope on the bed, which goes back to what Bryson had told them, that he burned through the rope to escape. And they also see that the bars that are on the headboard of the bed are pretty, like, not worn down because they're metal, but you could tell there was a lot of wear on yeah, there. Yeah, right. Yeah, from, a, from something be, being tied to it and rubbing on it um, over time. And so they're seeing that his story is being cooperated. Yeah, yeah, with all this, all this evidence. Uh, near the bed, they also find that the, um, an electrical device that was plugged in and wires were running from that device, which was a transformer, uh, to the bed. <clears throat> they also find syringes that were, like, ready to go. They were full wow, of the, tranquilizers. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh. They find porn magazines on the floor an audio tape, and then a journal, which is what I mentioned right. earlier the briefly. Polaroids and- yeah, a journal full of, like, basically all these notes and different kinds of codes, and then a ton of Polaroid pictures. Jeez. And that's just in this one room. In another room, they find a box full of more Polaroids, and I think it was, like, it was an obscene amount. Total was about 350 pictures. Wow. And it was all of just these horrible pictures of men, only men, um, suffering. A lot of suffering um, and a lot of pain. They also decide to go into the bedroom. They open up the closet and they find a bag full of human vertebrae. Wow. And a human Jeez. skull. Oh, my god! It was gosh. later determined when they took the skull in for to analyze it. That it belonged to someone who was between the ages of 21 to 32, and they had been dead for approximately a year to a year and a half. Jeez. So were his victims all within uh, a certain age range? Do we know? They were, I want to say they were all like between their teens all the way up to about 30, maybe yeah. mid 30s. So young. I mean, to anyone, yeah. it's not okay. But Right. Geez. Um, It's later determined that the skull belonged to one of his victims uh, known as Robert Sheldon. Again, police are still searching the house. They find kind of these weird masks and they find several books on the occult. So for a second, they thought it might have been like some sort of like satanic ritual. Right. Um, They also find this weird like they described it as like a ceremonial robe. So think of like if you're if you imagine like what a say and I'm I'm not saying at all like what Satanists do but right. imagine like a Satanist like wearing this robe and chanting and that's right. what they imagine right, right. for a second. Um, and so they brought in like an officer that was kind of a pro um, about satanic crimes and there was a big huge panic in the 80s about sat- like Satanism and 
It's called like the satanic panic. I don't know if you guys have ever heard about no. it. Yeah. Interesting. There, yeah, there's a huge wave of that and thinking like all these crimes would tie into satanic like what's it called rituals. Right. <laughs> Sorry, more what? Yeah, so they, that they would tie into satanic rituals and such. But long story short, that wasn't the case here, obviously. They also located a chainsaw in the basement. When that was taken to the crime lab, they found traces of human blood on it, oh. human hair, and even human flesh. That's how he was like dismembering yep. bodies. Police and- found a missing man's wallet, also found some cut out newspaper articles about like another missing man from the area. So it's probably he he was probably um responsible for that missing person and that's oh, yeah. like he's like oh heck yeah i'm kind of in the yeah those, those are their trophies yeah. you know they're proud of it yeah sick and they also saw that there was like in the basement there was a like an area on the floor that seemed it had a fresh um a fresh thing of cement a fresh oh. pour of cement in that area weird oh, so like, police thought maybe okay. like, like if somebody was bloat. killed there yeah. then if it had been stained with blood, if the like blood is soaked in, or you, you know, a body stays on the floor and you get that. Oh, the like ground. the imprint or whatever. Yeah. yeah, it could have been. Yeah. And so oh, they think I'm that sorry. he. My imagination's gone. No, that, that definitely could have happened. But yeah, they find the new cement, I guess, piece in the basement. So they thought that was suspicious as well. Yeah. Considering everything else they found. Of human course. vertebrae and skulls. And- yeah. And this, and also Bob, he just, he opened up his own little occult shop eventually. And I'm saying this because it kind of goes into like with them finding the skull. At first they weren't sure, like, is this a real human skull? Kind of like when you said yeah, so like uh, from the Willie Halloween. picked him. Yeah. yeah. Like, is this real? Um, he had his own shop called, it was Bob's Bizarre Bazaar. Okay. And he had like, um, just like stuff from the occult, like just weird things, yeah. oddities. Taxidermy. Yeah, and, yeah. Stuff like that. And so the first second they thought maybe this was like a prop or something that he could have sold. But of course they found out that it was legit. It wasn't fake. Was he selling like body parts at his occult shop? (laughs) No, not that we know of. That's a good question though. (laughs) I mean, you never know. Yeah. The officers examined all those uh, Polaroids that were found along with that journal. Uh, There was a bunch of other men on those Polaroids. Uh, It showed them being bound, assaulted, just by looking at the picture, they could tell that at least one man was dead in the photographs. Wow. Um, after they examined the torture or the journal log that he did, they determined that it was written by somebody who was very meticulous, like had to have complete control, had to have order in everything. And that's, again, Bob, he needed to have that control. Uh, there was notes in that journal about what was done to the victim specifically, the time it was done, uh, what the date it was done, and what the victim's reaction was for everything. So if if the victim reacted verbally, then he would write down the exact words that the victim would say. Okay. Right? So if he's swabbing, sorry. Come on. If he's swabbing someone's eye with the ammonia and they're saying please stop and he's writing that whatever down, yeah right. then he'll write please stop right it's next like a to transcript. it transcript yeah and the yeah. time that it happened if for example he gave an injection of something like the sedative he would write down what drug it was and how much he gave to the person and again so their reaction did they pass out did they just have slurred speech? What was their reaction? So he was very so much like, like experimenting. Yeah. yeah, it seemed like he was like experimenting and just torturing yeah. these people. So interesting. Um, also wrote down any kind of sexual assault. So if he was using things like his fist oh, in certain places or objects in certain places, he would write down what those objects were. And the victim's response. Jeez. Yes. Horrifying. Um, The last thing that he would record in there, he recorded any victim movements. So he was really, like like I said, he would like listen. Like if somebody was moving around and he wasn't even in the room, he'd write, oh, this he's moving at this time and da-da-da-da-da. Very, very meticulous about it. I wonder what the end result is for him on that. You know, like was he trying to write a book? I think this is just me. I think two things. I think one, he was curious and he just wanted to know what would happen if X, Y, and Z. 
But I also think that it was his way of reliving the torture because if the victim escaped or died or whatever, he can go through it and it was a play by play. And a lot of times serial killers, they'll take trophies yeah for that reason to relive or to fantasize about that moment so for, i think for him this was like yeah, you're recording everything you do that with the polaroid and the vertebrae and the, and the body part sure you can yeah, like why are you saving a bunch go of go back to it yeah so that's what i think it was i mean it, yeah no knows? that makes a lot of sense um he would uh the last i'm sorry not the last but another thing that was i guess like a reoccurring note in the journal was he would sometimes write dd or 86 so let's say you have a log of someone and they're doing this and you're injecting him here and they're doing that da, 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 da. and then the last thing on some of them would just be 86 and then nothing else 86 with the time of the day i mean they died yeah yeah just, i mean you know because it was like as servers at, i was a waitress yeah so something was 86 we no longer had it exactly and right. he worked as a chef for a long time oh so for him it was he 86 knew. was a code right. yeah that yeah, they he knew same thing. so what's dd i don't know that's okay. what i was yeah, i was wondering DD. about that maybe like and i don't know if they knew but dd like maybe dead deceased something i don't yeah, know who knows but definitely means that yeah they're they're gone wow yeah so that day Bradella was charged with nine felony counts and they did this so that he would be detained while they continue to search the property. They didn't want him to be right. out on bail, on bail at all. Right. So the judge ordered that he would be held without bond. And on April 4th, 1988, he was arraigned on seven counts of sodomy. What's sodomy? It's like when you like, when you, when you're with someone sexually and you're like abusing them okay. and torturing them and just like, you're like the master they're you're yeah. sodomizing them. Okay. Am I explaining it right? Does that sound No, like no, I understand. Easy? Okay. So sodomy, um, one count of felonious restraint, so capturing someone, and then uh, one count of first degree assault. So as the police have him in custody, they're continuing to search the house because this is just the initial search, right? Oh. This is just what they found on day one. So day two or whatever it was after the fact, they start focusing on the backyard of the house. So, and, and they did this because they noticed that an area in the backyard had been recently worked on. It looks like it was like something new was planted there. Like the dirt looked right, disturbed. Fresh, right. Yeah. And so their search team goes out. They start shoveling dirt carefully. They don't use any machinery just in case they, there's something there. They don't want to damage it. So they're shoveling the dirt. And within like the second or third shovel, shovel full of dirt that goes up, they hit something and they find a human head. Oh my goodness. Buried in the backyard. And I don't say skull because there was still tissue on this head. Like that's how fresh it was. So there was tissue still on oh. the head, hair, and then some vertebrae was attached as well still. They determined it was a male between the ages of 25 and 36 when he died. Uh, the head had been back there between six weeks and 10 months. Oh, and later it was determined that this belonged to Larry Pearson. And as they're digging in the backyard, they don't find a whole lot more. They find some more vertebrae, but no other human bones, just a few animal bones back there. And that's yeah. probably, he wasn't burying animals. That's probably just like little critters dying. I don't know. And I say, I don't know because so this guy, when he, he, I'm not going to go into all the background right now, but just real quick, as he was going to college, he went to art college and he thought that it would be artistic to torture a Jeez. chicken of course he did a duck and a dog in class on stage oh my god to the point of killing them he killed a dog in class Ugh. like so <sighs> yeah i know he sounds who knows he's insane and then he he dropped out of art school after that because i think there was i mean i know there was a lot of complaints like I mean, the yeah, yeah, he's a the teachers weird, and the right. professors are like, what the hell? Anyone the other in the students right are totally yeah, anyone in the right mind. Well, right. I wonder too if he's like um, torturing these gentlemen as well because in like the name of his art, you know what I mean? Oh, I didn't even think you of know, that. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, is like, he did this in an art class with animals, so this maybe him documenting and all that was this like artistic 
oh, experiment that's that a good was point. obviously yeah. very morbid and not. Maybe everything was going to be a collection for one big art right. piece or something. Maybe after he dies or something, he was hoping that, you know, he can unveil this. Have we established or do we establish that all these uh, victims were sex workers? Yeah. They are not all oh. sex workers. A, a lot of them, I would say, yeah, some of them are definitely. Mm -hmm. But um, that's a great question. A lot of, they were all basically picked up around the same area. I don't want to say all, I say most. And by that, I mean, what I haven't revealed yet is Bob was homosexual, which I'm sure you guys gathered from mm -hmm. these all being men. He was homosexual, so he would hang out in this area of town where there was a lot of like gay clubs and a lot of uh, drug users, a lot of sex workers. So mm -hmm. kind of like the seedy part of town. Yeah. And he would pick up these sex workers and runaways and drug addicts and all that. But the interesting part is that a lot of these people he would help. So he would like bring them home and try to help them recover again very like Willie Picton ish of saying yeah. like I'm gonna help you recover off of drugs but he really would he would try to help people get back on their feet um even the neighbors when they were interviewed would tell police like yeah he was kind of like like a foster dad to a lot of these guys wow and they would live there rent free they would like do chores for him and stuff in return but um so were these yeah, the same people no. he would torture or some people he helped and then others he chose to torment and some he did both Okay. He helped them, and then years later, he'd run into them again, and then this would happen. I wonder if he was like had like a schizophrenia or this is similar to John Wayne Gacy, wasn't it? Didn't he have a thing like you bring boys over to help and he kind yeah, of help them yeah. But I think in the but I think Gacy would like yeah bring him over to and like like they would work right, right. like he would pay them quote unquote to work, mm -hmm. whereas right. he was like come live with me for free and I'll like help you get back on your feet okay. and for a but while yeah, it sounds I mean, like for a while too like, it'd be for like you know not just for a day or something. right they would say yeah. there for a few a weeks maybe weeks sometimes months yeah so and all those polaroids i talked about that were found like over the, the 350 it was determined that only some of those men were killed and huh. i'll let you guys know he he killed six men in total okay he tortured a lot more but he, he killed get away six. with torturing and not killing. You know what I mean? Like, so he let him go or well, got away? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm just wondering I think he got away with that. it because here's the thing, right? Look at the people he's picking up again, drug addicts or prostitutes. In right. fact, a lot of the prostitutes in the area would like warn each other again, very Willie Picton ish of, oh no, that guy, he's, he's a bad, they would call him a bad John. Like yeah. we don't want to go with him. He's too rough or he's into weird shit. He wants to tie you up and beat you. And Jeez. we're not into that. Uh, -uh. Like don't yeah. go with him. Mm. And it, in fact, one of the, one of his victims had actually gone to the police at one point and reported him. He had said, you know, this guy, Bob, I just want to let you know that there's these two missing guys at the time, two mm. missing guys. Uh, that were last seen with him maybe you should check it out maybe he's linked to these missing guys so many stories like this right and right. the police go well yeah you know and they and they they do they have have him under surveillance and oh wow so they actually did try to follow they, up they, on it a little bit but then he got like an attorney and the attorney's like if you don't stop harassing my client we're gonna sue you to the cops Jeez. yeah it was a mess and what did um, bob do for a living he just had an oddity shop Is that he had an he oddity shop and he would have it like a, a at a flea market so it wasn't like a store okay. it was like a like yeah. a frankincense type uh -huh. of yeah, booth. yeah going to different booths different yeah. conventions or whatever um, and he worked as a chef okay that's right so I don't know if it was like an actual chef or like a line cook, sure. but yeah, he did huh. that kind of work. And he wanted to be an art professor, but he oh, he didn't. God. Thank Imagine God, he didn't make being it. A student, yeah. Oh my gosh, oh, hell no. He's like, yeah, today you guys can go uh, kill your family dog and bring yeah. in the heart. No, yeah, thanks. exactly. And let me know what, how the dog reacts when you yeah, kill let it. Let me know how and you how killed it. How long did it take for your dog to how die? How deep what was did... that stab wound? Yeah. Oof, my God. Yikes. Nope. 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 No, um no, no. yeah so like i said oh yeah so the pictures uh some of the men in there like i said were killed some were not a lot of them were tortured and police even think that some of the photographs might have even depicted men who enjoyed it because uh, you yeah, know everyone's right. got their own thing yeah. so who knows sure uh all in all Berdella, um, i'll refer to him as bob it's just easier sure. but bob had picked only some of the men to keep as like sex slaves and 
I so guess like the regulars, others, I guess. Yeah, it's weird. But, so some people enjoyed it, so they're probably like, I'm down to do this again. Or I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. Absolutely. At his arraignment, Bob pleaded guilty to killing Larry Pearson, which was the person's head that was found in the backyard. And he pleaded guilty because he was trying to avoid the death penalty. So when he did this, prosecutors were really kind of like caught off guard. Like, oh, whoa, he pleaded guilty. What the heck? Right. Yeah. They're like, you know what? All right, whatever. We'll let him plead guilty because they at that point, they had another skull still, the one that they found in the closet. Oh. And for the prosecutors, yeah, one, of the yard, and then one, one of the yard, the yeah. right. That was the actual head that had like still the skin on it. And then the one in the closet, which was just the bone, the skull. So they were like, okay, well, we still have that skull that we need to identify so we could file more charges against this guy later. Cause they really wanted to, they really wanted him well, yeah. to die. Yeah. So Bob admitted to the judge that he killed Larry Pearson by asphyxiation, which, oh, that just like, that's freaks choking me right? out. Yeah. Or well, yeah, suffocating. but he, he suffocated him by placing a, a plastic bag over his head. Oh. And then he tied the bag with a rope like around his neck oh. and he just let him like die. Like he just ran out of air. Ugh. Oh my gosh. So, so scary. Um, also later on, another victim was identified and that was Robert Sheldon. And they were able to identify him with dental records. That was the skull in the closet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this time prosecutors notified the court in advance that they were going to seek the death penalty. And that's what they needed. They needed to tell the judge in advance, we're going to go for the death penalty on this case. Here's another person. We're going to try him for murder. And the reason why that's so important is because that's the only way really that they had to make Bob confess to everything uh -huh. and do a plea bargain for life in prison. Because he that was, was like, like, well, if I'm not going to get the death penalty, then I'm not going to confess anything. Right. Right. So it was like, like a it, bargaining chip. Almost. Exactly. And so that's what made Bob give a full confession. He gave details about all of the sadistic things that he did. He named names of his victims. Um, and all this was done so he could have a life in prison yeah. instead of the death penalty. Is he and still alive? He is not. He died of a heart attack in jail in 92. Okay. Wow. So that was quickly after... That yeah, 1988 is when the I wish she suffered more in jail, but yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. But I'm glad he's dead. Oh, totally. I don't waste yeah. our tax dollars paying for his dumb ass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's what I'm going to leave off for today. But oh. for our next episode, I'll go into his confession because it is wild. There's a lot. If you guys thought today was rough. I'm going to cringe. Yes. Oh. This confession is horrible. I can't. Just horrible. This is honestly an episode that's made my stomach hurt the most, I think. This episode was, I'm telling you, I've, I've got to be so heavy to like research two weeks. this stuff. Like I've lived with this for what, two weeks at least? Yeah, yeah to research yeah. this, like I'm, I'm, I get sketched out listening to it. So I can't imagine having to dive deep and research and spend days and weeks with something. I'd be like, especially if you're like home alone one night or no. Oh my gosh. I keep, I'm, now I always think someone's coming to kill me. No wonder you keep telling me you're tired. Yeah, what do you think I'm doing? I'm I'm researching oh. and writing and sleeping I've been, with I've been one watching MasterChef and you're and you're There's no way you would be able to sleep with all that in your head. Heck no. I can't <laughs> sleep already. Oh, MasterChef, do they have butchers on your show? No, well they have sexy Gordon Ramsay. And that is <laughs> Don't gaze. I love him. Me too. On that note, come cook for me, Gordon. Oh, please. Hell's I'm hungry. Okay, me guys. Too. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Please tune in for our next episode for episode part two. two. Yeah. Yes. All right, grave diggers. Stay paranoid or be buried. Once again, thanks for listening, Grave Diggers. Don't forget to rate and review The Buried Sisters on Apple Podcasts. And don't forget to follow us at facebook.com backslash The Buried Sisters and on Instagram at The Buried Sisters. Dig you later. Dig you later.